beautiful people and welcome, hi, to Ask the Jeff Kazuha Edition. Let's get right into it. No intro, bam. Challenge reply to any questions via haiku. Okay, first things first, what's his overall place in the meta, pull value, especially compared to the other 3.75 stars, and how much has changed with him since his last rerun, as well as Dendro release in 3.0. Let me just say this, he's an excellent unit, Sucrose is better. There's your haiku. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, but seriously, he is an excellent unit. He His passive gives a lot of damage percent. His grouping ability is pretty easy to use. Uh, it's a lot more intuitive. I would say than the groupers that rely on auto targeting. He has a reasonably reasonably high amount of personal damage that mostly justifies his longer field time than the other groupers, right? His animations are much longer than the other animal units, but he has generally higher personal damage to, to make up for that, so it's not as big of a downside. Overall, he's just he's just very good. The main downside that he has isn't even really a downside. I mean, it's the same issue as Yelan, really, which is that she's very good and he's very good, but he won't necessarily be an upgrade to your account. Especially post Dendro release, I think there's a lot more teams that can easily get away without an animal unit. And not necessarily just get away, but like prefer not using animal units. And so, not for everyone, but for, for, a lot, for a lot of people, if you pull for him, it's going to be to either replace your Sucrose or change your teams or whatever, right? But basically, he'll be replacing your Sucrose. Now, the issue with that is Sucrose is very fucking good, and there are a lot of teams in which replacing Sucrose for him will be a downgrade or a sidegrade. There are also teams where replacing him for Sucrose will be an upgrade, but it is important to mention the teams where it won't be, because if you get him expecting him to be an upgrade, and then it turns out that you're clearing slower with him, it, it won't feel very good. The reality is that if you play Genshin for a long enough period, of time, you'll be able to wish for multiple five-star units, and you'll be able to get more than eight over time. Like, I have spent money on Genshin early on, but the amount of primogens that I got from the money that I spent is less than the amount of primogens that I have on my account right now. And so, but the state of my account, the amount of five stars that I have are actually what you would expect out of a, a free-to-play player who's been playing from day one. The reason why I'm mentioning this is basically because unless you want to be going for constellations on your five star units, sometimes you're gonna end up having two good teams and in a situation where the only real reason to pull for a new unit would be either if they upgrade the teams that you already have, which is pretty unlikely to happen, or if they give you access to new teams. And that's generally where Kazuha's value starts to shine because he gives you the opportunity of playing a team with Sucrose on one side and a team with him on the other side. And also, he makes the teams where he is an upgrade over Sucrose better, obviously, and might be more of an incentive to go for those teams instead. When I say that Sucrose is better than Kazuha, I don't mean that Kazuha's bad or that he's a useless pull. At the end of the day, he's a support. And as I mention, honestly, as I, I don't even mention it enough. I should mention it more. But as I try to mention as much as I can, Supports are generally more valuable than carries because it's very hard to justify putting one more than one carry on your team, whereas it's very easy to justify putting one, more than one support on your team, right? Characters that need to spend 20 or 15 seconds in a row on field generally don't work well with each other because one of them's being useless while the other one's on field, and then vice versa. All in all, I think that there is definitely a lot of misconce misconceptions about him, and also, maybe even more importantly, a lot of misconceptions about Sucrose that made people think that he's more necessary than he actually is. But even throughout, even through all that, he's still a very valuable unit and a very good one to get. All right, I don't, I don't want people to go away from this video thinking that, well, I have Sucrose, so I shouldn't get Kazuha no matter what. Like, not at all. It should be more so. I have Sucrose. I shouldn't feel like I have to get Kazuha unless it helps me supplement my teams in X ways. How much has changed with him since his last rerun as well as Dendro's release in 3.0? Well, Dendro's release, like I said earlier, it's not necessarily that it made him worse. I mean, it didn't make anything worse, right? It just, Dendro's release gave you more team options and there are a lot of Dendro teams that do not need an animal unit, which has given you a lot of non-animal team options that could make it so that if you were to go for Kazuha, 
Kazuha, he wouldn't actually improve either of the teams that you're using for this. Or at least he wouldn't improve it he wouldn't improve them nearly as much as a character like Nahida would, or a character like Ilan would. But even then, he also has Dendro teams in which he works very well. He is very good in aggravate teams, he is good in salad teams, and he is necessary for saute teams to be able to function, which is why they're called that. They're called saute, because saute means jump or jumped in French and they're called that because he jumps, right? Like they're not really a team outside of him. They're kind of a joke outside of him. Right? Like there are still Dendro teams that work well with him, but there's also a lot more viable team options that don't rely on animal units, which has given you more non-Kazuha options basically. Other than that, I mean obviously Nilo is one way in which you have more Dendro team options that don't want to use an animal unit. To some extent, Wanderer Ferrazon, when you're playing Wanderer or when you're playing Chao with Ferrazon, it can be nice to have a grouper on your team and it also helps with your animal particle generation. The main issue with it is that it leaves you either without a shielder or without a healer, which people generally tend to prefer going for. When uh, Wanderer initially came out, he came out right before an Abyss reset. And when he came out, it was, we had the um, the quadruple, right, the shadowy husks. And his teams with, with like Bennett Toma or Bennett John Lee, unless you were wailed out the fing wazoo, just couldn't clear that side in time because his AoE wasn't large enough to cover multiple of them reliably. And that was an example where, uh, that was a new team where characters like Gaza were actually fairly good. Uh, and it's one of the few, very, very few team examples where you actually have a good reason to go for attack, damage, crit Kazuha over EM Kazuha. What else do we have? Oh yeah, I guess that's true. With Dendro release itself, more Dendro options, and namely Dendro healer options, are really nice in the sense that they let you go non-healers on your other slots. And it's really nice to be able to go for him or Sucrose instead of a unit like Jean or Sayu because they just do so much more for the team. That being said, that was something that you could do by using Kuki beforehand as well. So it's not, it was not something completely new with Yao Yao, but it is something that was a little bit more uh, brought to the front, I guess. Insert the oblig obligatory He's not a must pull reminder here since that distinction gets tacked on him more often than most units. True, true. He's not a must pull. While he may improve some teams, Sucrose is better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get this out of the way early. How does Sucrose compare to uh, how does Kazuha compare to Sucrose? Shuffle. I like how you actually thought that I would not have mentioned it multiple times by question three. But but we can go into 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 it a little bit more for sure. When I say that Sucrose is better, I do not mean Sucrose is strictly better, and I don't even really mean that Sucrose is j objectively better. It's more so, I think that they're very similar in terms of power, in terms of how much they bring to a team, and both of them are better than the other in some teams and worse in others. I think overall, like, in reality, they're about as good as each other, but I say Sucrose is better because it's clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of trying to overcorrect for, for the community perception that Kazuha is way better than her. But in reality, I don't actually think that he is just worse than Sucrose. I think they're both very good and both have their situations where they're useful. But the fact that Sucrose is a four star that you're a lot more likely to have leads me to insist on her strengths a bit more really just to go about trying to address people's perception that they have to pull for Kazuha, that, he, that he's a must-pull unit. But let's go over the teams in which Kazuha is better or worse than Sucrose. Three teams, Kazuha is better. It's not really close. Kazuha's grouping is better in three teams most of the time because his biggest downside in terms of his grouping is that it happens once and then it doesn't happen. But if you freeze the enemy right after you group them, then they stay frozen, so it doesn't matter that it only happens once. On top of that, Sucrose's EM boost doesn't do much for freeze teams, whereas Kazuha's damage boost does work and help for freeze teams. Kazuha can infuse either Hydro or Cryo to help you maintain your freeze up time a lot more easily, and it's a little bit more sus to do that. With Sucrose, he has higher personal damage as well. Uh, if you want to be like clearing a chamber without having to do a full rotation at the end because he's building full EM and his plunge shatters, it actually can help you cheat out a little bit more damage without costing bursts. All in all, he just does better than Sucrose in freeze teams. And then Mono teams are the other example where he does better than Sucrose, right? So Mono Pyro, Mono fucking Mono anything, really. Because again, Mono teams don't rely on reactions and therefore don't gain that much from Sucrose's EM buff. And then there's teams where Sucrose is just better. There's a lot of vape 
teens where Sea Girls is better, but there's also a teen, uh, vape teens where Kazuha is better. Sea Girls gives a much bigger buff for vape, but depending on the team that you're using, the setups can be more scuffed, which makes Kazuha a potentially better option in some very specific teams, mainly the ones that use Child. But in stuff like Sea Girls National, or I guess just like baseline national. Sugos is a lot better than Kazuha because her setup is a lot faster and does not rely on making sure that you don't accidentally hit an enemy with the wrong element because you can do your Globus Swirl, which Kazuha can't do. So you need to have an actual Pyro Aura on the enemy in order to get a Pyro Swirl with Kazuha. That's not necessary with Sucrose. But yeah, whereas stuff like if you were to use the, the, the international thing, uh, he does do better because the setups are a little bit more scuffed to do with Sucrose and because it's easier to apply apply the right elements when you're in AoE to different enemies in order to get your swirls properly. I'd say Taser is probably the the best example of where Sucrose is generally better. Uh, even then, you can, like, Kazuha can outshine her if you want to be unfielding a specific Hydro or Electro unit, but uh, Sucrose is the best on-fielder for Taser, so generally he'll perform worse. Salad teams, so teams where you're playing Hyper Bloom with an Animo trigger rather than Electro trigger, Sucrose generally tends to do better. Aggravate teams, it kind of depends. Sucrose gives a bigger buff because her C6, which generally is kind of sus and is hard to rely on. Uh, in Aggravate teams, you're using your Animo unit, you're using Electro, uh, electro units, and you're using Dendro units. You can't swirl Animo, you can't swirl Dendro, you can't infuse use Animal or Dendro, so it's a lot easier to infuse Electro. Uh, if you want to be using Hakushin, also, you can get a bunch more out of that. But if you're playing her on field, you can also just use Sak. And pairing that C6 and potentially Hakushin or TTDS or whatever with her EM buff, she gives a bigger buff than Kazuha does. On top of that, if you decide to on field her, she also does more damage because she can actually infuse her attacks. Well, or rather, she actually applies Animal with her attacks, whereas Kazuha doesn't. However, if you're playing them off field, Kazuha's personal damage will be fairly significantly higher because he just rolls more when you're when he's off field. And there are some enemies in which or against which Sucrose's grouping won't work quite as well. So if you're using something like this, for example, uh, this is the kind of team where honestly, really, you can use Kazuha or Sucrose. All right, Sucrose will be a bit uh, bigger buff. Kazuha will be more personal damage. Kind of depends on what you really want to be going for. Uh, whereas in teams like this, I would much rather use Sucrose than Kazuha. That being said, another thing that you can do is play more quick swappy teams where you actually use Nahida, something like Nahida, Fischl, Kuki. In those teams, again, Kazuha and Sucrose are both good, but if you want to have more freedom to quick swap, well, the more you swap out of your active character, the less time they spend off fi uh, on field, so that can uh, skew results a little bit more towards Kazuha. Uh, this is definitely one of the teams that are very underrated overall, but both with Kazuha and with, uh, with Sucrose. Now, obviously, this may not be the best use of your Nahida. If you if you have another side that wants to use Nahida, then you're probably better off going for something like this with Yao Yao to leave your Nahida open for the other side or uh, with, with Yai instead of Beto or Kutsing or whatever. But uh, if your Nahida is available, if you have Nahida and she's available, then I don't really do, definitely do think that more people should be giving teams like this a shot. Personally, there will always be a special place in my heart for this, going TF on Kazuha. That being said, unless you get to actually abuse fall damage, generally, this won't necessarily perform better than the other aggravate team options, where you just play him as solo animal, and you use, like, Kuki with Nahida or something like that. But, against enemies that are vulnerable to fall damage, you can abuse fall damage. It's really weird. I would invite you to go check out a pretty old video of mine. It, it was one of, one of the first videos that I made, so if you scroll all the way down on my videos, you should be able to find it but it was a video about a cheese trap for 12-1 back in the day way before dendro release where i did this and i basically got three stars on the chamber without any artifacts just by abusing the <laughs> out of fall damage with tf kazuha uh, another team where he can be better than sucrose is uh like i mentioned earlier the the sauté teams something like this more popular version would be the Intergrational. These are fairly reasonably good teams uh, that can get a little sus if you're not doing the rotations right though. So do keep that in mind, but uh, they can very much be good teams. Uh, specifically in this abyss, they actually are very good because you got Hydro for the Pyro Shield, you've got Dendro for the Hydro Shield, and you've got Pyro for the Cryo Shield. And then on top of that, you've got good AoE Pyro Application by infusing Kazuha's ult, uh, good single target Pyro Application by spamming Bennett E. Uh, so all in all, like uh, uh, this team actually 
does very well on the second side of this abyss. In any case, let's move on to the next question. Is he nearly irreplace uh, a nearly irreplaceable part of swirlable mono element teams? I wouldn't call him nearly irreplaceable, but if, I definitely do think that if you want to be playing mono element teams, stuff like this as a core, or Klee if you have her, or even this as your core, or 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 this as your core. Very often mono element teams aren't necessarily better than non mono element teams, and the main reason to go for them is because your alternatives are busy on your other side, or because they're they're just easier to play. I would say that like almost always rather play Sucrose National than Mono Pyro because it just performs better most of the time. But Mono Pyro is easier to play. At the end of the day, yeah, I I, I would say that like not not nearly your play but he's the main deciding factor in whether those teams are like really worth playing. But even then, most of the time, I generally wouldn't play them over the reaction teams because they, they all have their issues, right? Mono Pyro has the issue that it's generally just a downgrade over vape trailing teams. Mono Hydro has the issue that it just does not do anything in AoE. Mono Cryo has the issue that if you're ever against an enemy that is not a boss, you will hate your life and regret not bringing a Hydro unit. Mono Electro has the issue that like, if you're gonna be playing two plus Electro units, why not put a Dendro unit instead of the of the of the last uh, instead of the last Electro? Mono Dendro is not a real thing. Mono Geo doesn't want Kazuha. Mono Animo is a little sus. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of this question because there's like the the implication with it that swirlable mono element teams are a thing that you at a baseline want to be doing. And while they generally can be easier to play, they're also generally a downgrade in output over non mono element teams. So him being better in them, it can be a factor, but it very often won't be. Infusion versus Swirl, and does Kazuha actually make double swirling that much easier? Let's start with the second one. No. In some cases, he does, and in some cases, he makes it harder. And in some cases, he makes it <laughs> impossible, at least compared to Sucrose. Obviously, he definitely is better at double swirling than Yunzen or Ningguang. But yeah, so in terms of Infusion versus Swirl, we can show it with a pretty easy example, I guess. So as you can see, right, we have our Pyro Infusion, but if I go check my stats, I have the 15% Pyro damage from Bennett's C6. But I guess if I look at an off-field character, I don't have any Pyro damage bonus. What that means is I didn't get a Pyro Swirl, which also means I didn't get a Pyro VV. Now in single target, when you're playing teams where you want to be Pyro Swirling, so you generally have a Pyro Carry, that won't happen too often, but it can, definitely can be a lot more of an issue in AoE content. Because in AoE content, a Pyro-infused Kazuha ult that hits an enemy with Hydro on them will just Cut. swirl Hydro and refresh Hydro on everything. Right? So if I do the usual setup... They still have Hydro on them. So if I then go here and I start doing this, well, I didn't get my... I didn't get my power swirl. And so in situations like this, you're gonna have to adapt a little bit. Here, what you'd wanna do is you wanna make sure that child's E is not hitting all three. If I only hit one of them, I actually do get my power swirl this time. And because I got my power swirl, then, well, I don't even know if he's on VV right now, but you get the VV, uh, you get all the good stuff, everything is Paul. Thing is, and a lot of other teams, it becomes a lot harder to do things like this, mainly because it can be very difficult to just not get cut by Singto's rain swords. So if I do something somewhat similar, but with Singto instead of Child, it's a little bit harder to show it here because I have C6 on Bennett, which kind of makes it easier to get th that Pyro Swirl. No Pyro damage. Now, obviously, as you can see from the fact that he's got 33 Hydro damage, this is not him getting a Pyro Swirl, which means I don't get the Pyro damage, and more importantly, I don't get the Pyro Swirl, which is obviously much more important than the damage bonus. It does a lot more for the team than the damage bonus does. But I just lose a very significant portion of my team's DPS because what happened here is Sinto's E reapplied Hydro on the enemy, right? The, the, the Rain Swords. When I used my E and jumped in the air, and then I I reapplied Hydro from, from contact. And that can happen a lot, even in single target, and it's the main reason why I generally don't like Kazuha in 
national teams like this because Sucrose doesn't have that problem. With Sucrose, if you drop Golba and you swirl, you can actually get a swirl from Golba himself. Right, you can get a Pyro Swirl from Golba himself, the good old Golba Swirl, which means that you can apply VV even if the enemy has Hydro on them. Yeah, so with Sucrose, I guess I can't show you the damage bonus as easily, but if we look at the damage, right, our Pyronado is doing 54k versus the 26k that it was doing with Kazuha, you right? Still. So you can pretty clearly see that in this case we did get the VP. Basically, with Galaha, you're reliant on the enemy's attack patterns and the enemy RNG, basically, on whether or not it's going to move into you or not. You have to make sure that you get to the right distance where uh, you'll be close enough for his abilities to hit the enemy, but not close enough that Sinto's, like orbitals are going to apply Hydro. And you also have to be careful because some enemies are not heavy, and if the enemies are not heavy, you're either going to pull them into you, which means that they're definitely going to get Hydro applied to them. And then you just can't do anything. Your power swirl, your double swirl isn't going to happen. So you basically have to give up on your Hydro Swirl if you want to guarantee your Pyro Swirl, which is not good, right? That's that's not what you want to happen. Now, obviously, there are a lot of ways in which you can work around these things, but generally they involve longer rotations and longer setups, which just make it, all in all, a pretty significant downgrade. Anyways, going back to Infusion versus, uh, versus Swirl, it is important to realize that an Infusion doesn't necessarily mean that you got a Swirl, because if you don't realize that, then you might be missing out on basically half of your damage, right? Missing out on VV plus the damage buff is a huge Cut. difference in how much damage you're going to be doing. So either if you want to play this team with Kalanha or just in general in teams that are using multiple elements, make sure that you're doing a setup that actually does get the Swirl that you want. Another good example is actually the uh, in, in, in free teams. And this part is actually very, very important if you're playing Kazuha in free Steam. So pay close attention if you are. Uh, I don't have Ayaka on this account, so I can't show it with Ayaka, but this is mainly for Ayaka players. Where did the cryo damage bonus go? Oh, golly goodness. We didn't get cryo damage. We didn't get a cryo swirl. Oh, gee. Well, that's not ideal, is it? Basically what's happening here is I'm freezing the enemy, but after I'm freezing the enemy, I'm applying Hydro to him because Sinso's E applies Hydro two times and then a third time if you're close enough to them for the orbital to hit. And so they're going to be frozen, but not just frozen. They'll be frozen with an underlying Hydro aura. So let's go to a freezable enemy that has a health bar at the top, which is cringe. What's happening here is I apply Cryo, then I freeze him, and as you can see, we have Freeze and a Hydro. And once the Freeze expires, he still has Hydro on him. He has an underlying Hydro Aura with the Freeze. The thing about that is when you Swirl, your priority dictates that you will Swirl Hydro before you Swirl Frozen, which is which acts as a Cryo Aura. So what that means is that if you do this, unless you apply enough Animo to completely remove the Hydro, you will not get a Cryo Swirl. However, Kazuha has a way to work around that, and that is to apply enough Animo that he does completely remove the Hydro. In order to do that, all you have to do is hold your E instead. And just like that, we get our Cryo Swirl. You can also use your ult. Your ult's initial hit is also two units. But just doing a tap E in a setup like this will not work. And I think a lot of people end up missing out on a very <laughs> sizable portion of their Ayaka's damage because they just don't realize that they're not swirling Cryo. So just make sure that you are keeping that in mind. In general, holding E during your setup on free teams is just a lot safer. There's no real, like, massive downside to using it. So if you want to be safe, you can just do it and you won't lose too much out of it. In any case, point of this whole thing, most of the time when you're playing Kazuha, or, or when you're playing Sucrose, really, it is worth trying to figure out what setup you should be doing to guarantee your swirls. Because you might be currently playing him wrong, basically. You might be currently doing setups that don't give you nearly as much damage as they should. There are some situations where Kazuha makes double swirling a lot easier, like in Freeze teams versus Sucrose, and there are situations where he makes it harder, like in Tanling teams. But yeah, like, just also, I guess I haven't actually, like, explained what the difference is. I've talked about why it matters, but swirl is what happens when you attack an enemy that has an element on them with animal. 
It's a reaction. Infusion is just, well, your animal units can deal damage of an element that is not animal when they infuse, right? So they can deal pyro damage or what, whatever. But if the pyro damage is hitting an enemy that has a different aura, it's gonna trigger a reaction. It might trigger vaporize, it might trigger melt, whatever. But then if that pyro does not get applied to the enemy, then your animal hit won't swirl pyro, even if it's infused with pyro because there's no pyro to swirl. The pyro that you applied with your infusion didn't make it to the enemy's aura. So there's no pyro to swirl. Is Kalzha's elemental damage bonus buff enough to ever warrant an attack percent goblet on a carry over a damage bonus one, or at least make it more viable? The general answer to this is no. There's a few specific cases where it can actually be good. I mean, to some extent with Raiden, but that's not really Kazuha. That's more so just Raiden's passive and emblem, giving her like almost 200 damage percent. Kazuha's damage percent is a <laughs> drop in the ocean compared to that. But you could look at something like Ayaka teams where you're using Kazuha and Mona, but you don't have Shenha. Attack all those can be pretty good there. Generally, it's still better to go damage percent, but there definitely are some situations where it, it becomes at the very least more less of a less of a downgrade to go attack goblins. Talent priority overview. How important are talent levels on him in most cases? And are his skill and autos better leveled simultaneously instead of one over the other? Okay, we're gonna do some very simple math. All of my talents are talent level 8, so it makes it a lot easier to compare. Old initial hit is 420%. The dot that it deals is 192%, and it deals it five times. But he does, with his ultimate, a total of 1380% of his attack as animal damage. We're not going to include the infusion for now. Now, what about his E? Well, if you press it, it's 307. Best case scenario, you can maybe get three presses or two holds in a rotation. So best case scenario, 307 times three or 417 times two. 307 times three is bigger, so let's use that. 307% times three. Normal attack is where the plunge damage gets decided. Now, whether he taps E or holds E, he always does a high plunge after using his E, unless you can <laughs> glide after using it or wait so long that you lose height. So, normal attack talent. Again, best case scenario, you use three skills, so you do three plunges, three times 349%. Well, you could look at the damage that you get on the plunge attack, that's the infusion damage, but you can't increase this talent level, so no matter what your talent level is, this is always the same. So it doesn't go into talent level priority. So, this is the burst, and we're not even looking at, uh, at the infusion damage. And this is the best case scenario for skill. Which one of these numbers is bigger? Ah! Oh. The burst number is bigger. There's your answer. In terms of talent priority, your highest talent priority should be your burst. After that, well, depending on if you do tap or skill, or uh, sorry, tap or hold on your skill. If you do tap, you'll get more damage out of your normal attack talent. If you do hold, you'll get more damage out of your skill talent. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to do three holds in a rotation because that's just way too long. But the difference is minor enough that you basically level them up at about the same priority. That being said, talent levels are not that important on him because most of the time he just do more damage on a fully M build. Swirl's good, turns out. Who would have thunk Swirl is good? Artifact set overview is 4 piece VV set important on him to the point of priori prioritizing set bonus over the right stats? Yes. 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 Keep in mind, Swirl damage is not animal damage. It's the damage of the element you swirled. If you swirl pyro, it's pyro damage, which means it looks at the enemy's pyro resistance. Let's say you've got a four piece VD set with no EM main stats. So you end up going for like an EM offset goblet or circlet. Maybe like a total of like 60 EM from your sub stats. You get 187 from your one main stat and you get 60 EM. Your EM multiplier. Well, is this times 16 divided by 2000 plus this plus one, and then another plus 0 0.6 because of the VV set effect that increases swirl damage by 60%. Swirl base, 868, I think. Swirl damage is going to be 868 multiplied by your EM multiplier, multiplied by the resistance multiplier, which because you have VV, is going to be 115 or 1.15 against an enemy that has a base of 10% resistances. Let's take a look at what happens if you go for something else, right? You're not going VV, right? So VV, one EM main. Gilded, full EM. 187 times three. I forgot his <laughs> EM ascension. It's 112, right? No, 115.2. And here we're assuming five. We could look at if you're assuming uh, Iron Sting instead as well. Substats, which is like, maybe you have better gilded pieces. Maybe it's 100. And then the gilded set bonus, which is gonna give you another oh, 230. Wow. 
but we don't have this restaurant. So in terms of his personal damage, he's gonna be doing about 20% more damage. But I'm sure you guys can realize how relevant this is. You don't have VV for your carry. And so your carry is gonna be losing about 22% damage for the about 22% damage that you're gaining. Reality though is that an actual real comparison would be more something like around the same amount of sub from substats. Realistically, probably more on the VV one because you can't get EM substats on something that has EM main stats. And if you're not getting EM main stats and you're more likely to have em on subs but also if you farm vv for a little bit you're basically guaranteed to get at least one em main stat whether it be sans circlet or goblet so it would most likely be two em main stats of a comparison and at that point even with two em main stats versus three vv does more damage than gilded and that's again before looking at just how much more <laughs> damage your carry is doing because you're getting vv point being no never ever ever unless another character on the team has vv which like you can do right you can do double animo teams i do tf kazaha i think it's fun but unless you have another vv on your team never put him on something other than vv and if you don't have a set of vv yet look at your four stars right uh, uh, a fully leveled four star is what 139 em i think i'm not sure yeah 139 em if you're only getting four stars it is still much better on top of that enemies recently tend to have a little bit more resistances they've been liking to put the <laughs> constipated beast in, a, in the abyss that actually have 25 percent base resistance instead of the usual 10 percent and then even higher against their their own element but if you're looking at enemies with 25 percent then it's an even bigger difference oh how the turns have tabled yes 4vv is important and you should always put him on 4vv can you briefly explain tf kazuha yeah it's basically just swirl can't trigger the tf set tf is not just any electro related elemental reaction it's the ones that it's, they specify on the set but swirl applies electro to nearby enemies and that electro application can trigger reactions so it can trigger quicken or electro charge which are pretty easy to reliably trigger on enemies now, obviously again you don't want to be playing tf if it means that you don't have a vv on your team so it's something that you'd only do if you have another animal unit as well and realistically, unless you can abuse the fall damage, generally it'll be better to just put him on VV and have an electro unit on uh, instead of the second animal. But if you want to do it, every time you swirl, you can proc the TF set. So if you E, you proc TF, minus one second. Lunge, proc TF, minus one second. Ult, proc TF, minus one second. And that's about three seconds of animation, which six seconds, three seconds of animation, three seconds lost from the TF set. You can use your E again. It's a fun thing. It's not like a, a particularly like insane wow cool pog thing but it is really fun to play so if you're looking for like if you're not struggling and you're just looking for fun things to do it's definitely something i'd recommend em animal or electro gullet for aggravate em not even close don't consider the other ones now that ferrazon exists has his crit build become more viable for a carry play style and how good of a team is a mono animal with them not really like you can play him as a quote-unquote carry and like a quick swappy team just because he's got reasonably high numbers you'd do better if you weren't like forcing him on field when his, he's on cooldown though. You can obviously use him on the crit build in not like only animal teams, but like three animal teams with uh, three animal with Bennett and they're fine. But usually that's going to be with like Xiao or with Wanderer and you're sacrificing a lot of defensive utility, which both tend to like quite a bit in order to be able to get that third animal unit. Most of the time it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing to have available to you, but it won't be the, the most popular version of the team. Even on a triple EM build, is great rate valuable. In general, I mean, it's it's fine. It's just a, it's a useful stat. Like, even if it's not the main way to increase his damage, it still increases his damage. But more importantly, fav. And the more crit rate you have, the more reliably you can proc your fav. So it is actually a very valuable subset if you're going for fav. How much ER does he need for his typical team archetypes at C0? And is ER Sans ever viable on him? So is ER Sans ever viable on him? Only if you don't have fav. There's almost no team where you need fav and ER Sans, and it's basically always better to go fav EM Sans than ER Sans Iron Sting, or honestly, even ER Sans Freedom Sworn most of the time. In terms of the ER Rex, I mean, it depends a lot, right? And it doesn't just depend on the team, it also depends on how well you're executing your rotations and how much the enemies are allowing for you to have the proper execution of rotations. As a general rule, in teams where you can actually use his E reliably, you should not need to build any ER over fav. Uh, and just getting crit rate to increase your odds of, of proccing fav and EM to increase your damage and buff 
are better. In teams where you can actually use his E a lot and you generate a lot of energy, so for example in uh, a lot of the aggravate teams, right, you look at something like this or something like this, you're generating a lot of energy and the rotations are flexible enough to allow you to use more than one and sometimes more than two, so sometimes up to three E's. Your AR requirements can go as low as like 110, to between 110 and 130. Generally I'd go around 140 in a team like this to play it safe, but that's probably a little bit more than you'd need. As a general rule, if your team generates a lot of energy like something like this, anywhere between 130 and 150 and you'll be comfortable. If your team has a lot of fives, obviously that also helps. Otherwise, 180 plus can be necessary for things to be to, to go smoothly. Uh, weapon overview, uh, Sag versus Fav versus Iron Sting versus Parasol versus Xyphos versus Freedom. Uh, okay. Fav is the general better option. That being said, Sack refreshing your E means that you have more front-loaded grouping or front-loaded damage if there is like a very squishy first wave that you can potentially kill with like Kazuha EQE or EE even, which lets you keep your carries cooldowns for the next wave. The additional grouping can also help you group enemies that spawn too far away from each other for one E to be enough to group them. So you go like, all right, if you've got one enemy that spawns, one enemy that spawns here, one enemy that spawns here, one enemy that spawns like here. And if you go here, it's like not enough to actually pick up these two enemies. You can go sack, go here, hold your E, and then go here, hold your E again to group them. So there, there can be some value in sack, even if it's generally not quite as good overall. Uh, and then Iron Sting, Parasol, you only really use them in teams that have a lot of energy generation, like some taser teams and a few aggravate teams. Or if you have the most <laughs> godly artifacts and you have like 200 ER in your substats and you just, you don't need the energy generation from Fab on the rest of your team. Uh, yeah, also on things like Raiden Hyper that generate a lot of energy for your Kazaha. And then Xyphos, I mean, it's always good in the same situations as Iron Sting and Parasol because it gives as much EM, and then on top of that has an ER passive. Uh, it can be better than Fav in the situations where Fav is good, but generally only at high refinement. At low refinement, you would often get more value out of Fav if your ER requirements are high enough to warrant the use of it. Freedom Storm is the five-star crit swords. Never use the five-star crit swords on him. They're never better than Fav. Well, than Fav or whatever EM weapon. Unless you're at CC but again, I, I, I'm not talking about C6 today. I guess another weapon that I'd want to mention is uh, Sapwood Blade. Sapwood Blade is a fine alternative if your ER requirements are higher than you can actually reach and you don't have a fab weapon or your fab weapon needs to be put on another character that wants the fab weapon. And it is especially valuable in, uh, in aggravate teams where you actually get the passive, but it is generally just a downgrade over, over fab. I mean, okay. In Aggravate with double Electro, very often you're generating a lot of energies and you have slightly longer rotations, so it can be. But the situations where Sapwood would be better, Iron Sting would generally also be better and better than Sapwood. So it's never better than Fav in a relevant manner. How good is Freedom Sworn as a general pool? It's meh. It's fine. It, I mean, it's good on Kazuha when you don't need more ER, but very often you do need more ER, so you're better off just going Fav. And then it's kind of just a fine option on a few characters that actually care about EM, but not better than the other five star swords. It's just whatever. If you want more more uh, of my thoughts on Freedom Sworn and the banner, the weapon banner is going to be in, you can check out the uh, banner review video that should be posted by the time this video comes out. Constellation overview. How good are his constellations across the board? I already talked about that, right? I guess I talked about it in the banner review video. I can go through it again. C1 is good, but it's not insane. It can help a lot with ER requirements because you can get one more E, but like in practice, a lot of the time, you don't even want to use the E reset, either because you want to use your ult before you use your E because your setups require that, or because if you use another E after your E and Q, well, that eats into your buff uptime. Right? When you're doing a double swirl with a national team, for example, you swirl Hydro with either your E or your ult at the beginning, and after that, you're only swirling Pyro, which means the more time you spend on Kazuha, but the less Hydro Swirl, and or Hydro VV, and Hydro like damage bonus uptime. Well, Hydro damage bonus will get refreshed most of the time, but the less Hydro VV uptime you have. Sometimes that's enough to justify not using the, the reset. Most of the time, you will use the reset. It is good. 
good. But there definitely are quite a few situations where it just doesn't actually help that much, right? Keep in mind, his E animation and his burst animation are pretty long to the point where without this, with TF, if you EQ, you have your E up by the time your Q animation is over. Which means this is, if you're doing tap E before your ult, only really a three second cooldown reduction on one of your E's. There are actually a few teams that can allow quick swapping more where this actually doesn't even increase the amount of E's that you get in a rotation because if you E after your ult, the next time you swap back to him, your E won't actually quite be ready. Whereas if you don't have this, you E, Q, you swap out, three seconds later, your E's back. In any case, like it's not a bad constellation, but it's definitely not quite as good as you might expect. Uh, CQ is his best constellation with the main caveat that it's really bad in teams where Sucrose is not good. Any team where Sucrose is not great is because you don't care that much about EM buffs, which means that the buff you get out of this kind of doesn't do shit. It will increase Kazuha's personal damage a little, and by increasing his EM, it will increase his uh, damage percent buff, but honestly, not by that significant of an amount. If you're playing a team, one of the teams that I mentioned earlier where, where Sucrose isn't that good, namely the Freeze teams and the, uh, and the Mono Element teams, this is just not a good constellation, and really, none of his constellations are that good, and none of them are really worth going for. In the teams where, where Sucrose is good, though, it can actually be pretty nice. Generally, it won't increase your team DPS as much as a constellation on a carry would, but because it's a support constellation, it can be used in more different teams. So ask yourself if you want to be going for constellations, do I want my one team to be better, or do I want all of my teams to be slightly better? And that's up to you. Uh, constellations past that are kind of meh. We've already established that he does most of his damage through swirls, not from talent damage, so the talent levels that you get from 3 and 5 kind of don't do that much. This helps with his ER requirements a bit, but it's fucking C4, like it doesn't, it's not that huge. C6 can be good, but I mean, it's a C6 and it's not a particularly impressive C6. It's fine, but is it worth the money? No. <laughs> Can I show some alternative methods of pulling off an Electro Swirl with him and aggravate comps with Nahida since her E makes it a bit of a headache to do so? Sure. Nahida's E, when you cast it, applies one unit of Dendro, but when it when the Tri-Karma triggers, it applies 1.5 units of Dendro, which in many cases makes the usual Electro Swirl setups that people do just not function and you just don't swirl Electro. The usual setup that you do with something like uh, Dendro MC is you special E, Dendro MC, EQ, Kazuha E. You get your Electro Swirl, because you should get your Kazuha E before the first hit of, uh, of MC's thing. If you do that with Nahida, no Electro Swirl. Still no Electro Swirl, and now we have an Electro Swirl. We had to stay on him for a pretty long <laughs> time. Another another way that people do the setups is they start with the Dendro and then go to Fischl and then do this. And you get the same problem when you're using Nahida of uh, Electro Modchik and we finally get it after quite a while. So, how do you work around that? If the only thing that I change is start with an attack on Lisa and then do the exact same setup, I get my Electro Swirl. So why, why does it work like that? Well, if I start with Nahida's E, right, I apply Dendro to him, and the aura that's on him is Dendro. Then I use Fischl's E. It triggers Quicken. Then what's gonna happen is Nahida's Tri-Karma is gonna proc, and it's gonna reapply Dendro on top of that Quicken, and then Fischl's Ascension 4 is gonna proc, because Fischl triggered Quicken, and it's gonna apply Electro onto that Dendro and trigger Aggravate, but isn't actually gonna remove the Dendro, because she applies 1.5 unit, so then Oz's first hit will trigger Quicken again, and will not apply under Electro. If all you do is you start by applying Electro, Nahida's E will trigger Quicken, but will not apply an underlying Dendro. And then you Fischl E, you apply underlying Electro, and you trigger Aggravate. Now because you triggered Aggravate, Nahida's E procs, and it triggers Quicken, removes the Electro, but doesn't apply anything, because there's Electro on them. And then, because you triggered Aggravate, Fischl's A4 procs, which reapplies Electro onto them. And so, you end up with your Electro Swirls. If you don't have a third or a second Dendro unit because you're using Animo or something as your last slot, uh, you can just start with the official charge shot. And it's the exact same idea. And you get your swap. There are other methods of doing it, but this is generally my favorite because it allows for you to basically do it against any sort of content. There's no situation where it doesn't work unless the enemy has like self-elemental application that over your swirls, right? But like, 
using your Naida ult here won't prevent you from doing it. It still just works. You're not reliant on the speed of your Electro Application or anything like that. It just works by default and it's easy to do. Is he good in Burgeon and or Hyperloom as a trigger? And how much better is Sote over the other Burgeon archetypes? In Hyperloom, he kind of suffers from just not being able to trigger Hyperloom that often because unlike the well unlike sucrose he runs out of animal at some point and because hyperloom's main upside or main like advantage over burgeon is electro charge and quicken help you generate more seeds like a lot more seeds than you will be able to generate in burgeon and so generally what, the, what that means is it, it leads to you missing out on a bunch of hyperblooms so i don't like it as much but it is still good because you get off field animal application and potentially an, an electro application which lets you use uh, units that need to spend more time on field like Ayato as your Hydro or Kokomi I guess if you want to play on field Kokomi. Uh, in Virgin uh, you don't generate as many seeds because of the nature of Virgin and you generally won't have very high uptime on Pyro on the enemy in a good Virgin team so just swirling generally won't be enough to get all of your seed procs and you'd rather have reliable infusions like Kazuha and he's actually pretty good in that right the, 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 in, the, in the good old sote teams how much better are they they're not really better unless you need the grouping but they are fun does the wind really know him no he knows the wind the wind's never even heard of him little bro thinks his celebrity knows who he is if the clouds aren't high or the birds don't come how does that affect his support capabilities it doesn't He's just as good, but he just becomes a lot more sad. And so do I, and so do you. Yeah, I see me doing them again, so. Okay, so that's gonna be it for the Kazuha Ask of Jeff. Uh, thank you all for dropping by, I hope. I hope all your questions were answered. If they were not, well, L Ribozo sucks to be you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, I really do hope I covered most of the questions. If you enjoyed, as usual, leave a like, all that good stuff. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, YouTube. Leave me alone!